Thank you very much, Dr. Ong. Uh, those were very kind words, and I just have to say I'm, I'm very honored to represent um, this part of the state of California. It really is an amazing place with so many people who give back, and I'm especially humbled looking at in the audience of the people in this room because so many of you have decided to dedicate basically your lives to public service in one way or another. So I'm very humbled that you're all here with me this evening. And Jennifer, thank you so much for mentioning some of those pieces of legislation. The years moved by quickly, and the battles at the time to make some of these happen seem so intense, but as the years go by, you almost do forget them. So thank you so very much. And it's always been my honor to work as hard as I possibly could for my community and always give back. And I'm going to tell you a little story about my grandmother and, and really where this all started, where it comes from. But first, I just want to say a couple of words about the League of Women Voters. Let me thank you uh, over the years and my um, opportunity to be involved in the community. One of the organizations that I joined a number of years ago was the League of Women Voters. And I remember when I first joined, I was a brand new attorney. And so the League was very happy to have me there because they were uh, going to uh, look at their bylaws and change the bylaws, do a major revision. And they said, aha! We have this new member who happens to be an attorney. And off I went with, at the time, I think it was, um, um, I'm forgetting her name right now, but one of the more original members of the board, she and I then worked very hard to, um, you know, come up with some changes. And some of those changes may still be in the bylaws today. I'll have to go back and take a look. And then I remember, right after that, I had the opportunity to go out and speak on initiatives. And it was the year, do you remember that year where there were like two or three competing uh, revisions of uh, insurance regulation. Do you remember that one? And the ballot measures were very confusing. So again, aha, she's an attorney. We'll send her out there to explain this to people. And I remember spending so much time reading the initiatives and trying to make sure that I could come up with a clear presentation and help people understand and not be confused of the differences between them so that they could be better voters. And um, I just want to say, um, this has been a very trying week, I believe, for all of us in this country. Um, you know, last Monday, the tragedy in Boston, I think, rocked us all to our very souls as Americans. Uh, the fact that, you know, we had this terrible bombing on Patriot's Day, a very extremely important day in the city of Boston where they remember their roots and, uh, and what they have done um, to make this a better country. So, um, in reflecting upon what to say tonight, I just wanted to mention the League of Women Voters is such an important organization because you do everything you can to make sure that people do go out and vote, that they use that very precious right they have and they register to vote, and they have the opportunity to learn from you and read in an unbiased way what the background is of these various measures and know more about candidates so people really can go out and participate in our American democracy and be part of the American dream and to make sure that we do everything we can every day to keep this democracy alive and all of those, you know, protect all those various rights and freedoms that we have, those that were really shook this last Monday. So thank you for what you do with regard to that. And I want to read something historic. Back um, when, the, when the Eve, excuse me, um, the Eve League of Women Voters obviously has followed in the footsteps of the very early days of the League of Women Voters, the Charter League of Women Voters, and the National American Women's Suffrage Association President Carrie Chapman Catt famously asked of her fellow sisters in 1920, the same year that the 19th Amendment was ratified, granting women the right to vote. She said. The League of Women Voters is not to dissolve any present organization, but to unite all existing organizations of women who believe in its principles. It is not to lure women from partisanship, but to combine them in an effort for legislation which will protect coming movements, which we cannot even foretell, from suffering the untoward conditions which have hindered for so long the coming of equal suffrage. Are the women of the United States big enough to see their opportunity? The women of the United States were indeed big enough and continue to be big enough, as you all are, as a testament to your collective work and your determination. As you know, the League has grown to be one of the most respected civic engagement organizations in the nation.
So as I look forward in my almost two years left, that one, <laughs> and I look backward in all of the, you know, the joy of being able to represent this area and the various things I've been able to work on, I wanted to just tell you a little bit story of my grandmother and how she influenced me and how I really think she's a big part of who I am and what I do today. As I was a child, I was taught patriotism and public service by one of the best teachers in the world, and that was my grandmother, Nellie. She lived with my family when I was growing up, so I had a great opportunity to learn her history and to learn the hardship that she'd been through. Her story is not particularly extraordinary, but I feel that she was very extraordinary. At the age of 15, Grandma Nellie set sail across the Atlantic Ocean all by herself from Ireland, with nothing more but a dream of a better life in the United States. She was leaving behind poverty and extreme hardship. She immigrated, like many of the Irish, across from the East Coast through Montana, and one of her first jobs was cleaning the houses and the hotel rooms as of, the, of, of this mining town in Montana as a domestic worker. She eventually, um, through that hardship, had the opportunity to meet my grandfather. And after many years there, they moved to Oakland. It was a growing town. There was a lot going on. And there were new jobs there for my grandfather and my grandmother. So they moved to Oakland, and my grandfather there worked a very difficult job as well. He was a hot carrier. Not what you call a hot carrier today, but an actual hot carrier. He carried the bricks on his back to the many <coughs> brick buildings you see in Oakland today. And those were difficult times as well, putting food on the table. And there were five young boys to feed. Sadly, my grandfather died when my father was only 10 years old, leaving my grandmother behind to raise those five young boys. And so, again, you know, Grandma struggled to raise those children, took in work, she did people's cleaning, she, she uh, took in sewing, she repaired people's clothing, and they did what they could to get by. I remember hearing funny stories from my father about the cow that he kept in the backyard so they could have some fresh milk as well. That was in the Fruitvale, Fruitvale District of Oakland back in those days. But one thing I remember that she used to tell me all the time as I was growing up, and that was, if you ever see something that you think is not right, you're the one who has to go out and change it yourself. And those words have rung in my mind so many times over the years. In my years when I became the first woman mayor of San Leandro, I would hear those words. When I served first in the assembly and in the years I've served in the Senate, my grandmother's words have always been there with me. So I've never forgotten her story. I've never forgotten where she has come from, where she came from. But I also remember what a strong patriot she was. She always thought it was important to get back to this country because she had received so many blessings, even within the hardship that she lived. And that has always been a major, major um, inspiration to me. So I know we have others to speak tonight, so I'm going to shorten my comments a little bit. But I just wanted to say, I want to say thank you to Grandma. I think she helped me break through the marble ceiling, as Nancy Pelosi calls it, and gave me the power and strength to believe, even back when, when I first started my political career, to run for mayor. When I ran for mayor, some of you, some of you may remember this, so many people came to me and said, you're never going to elect a woman as mayor in San Leandro. And I don't know, I don't know if it just happens to women elected officials, but often we share stories with each other. We're often told, you shouldn't do that. You're never going to be able to do that. But thankfully, you know, with my background, a little bit of uh, grandma's story, a little bit of Irish stubbornness too, I had the ability to push forward and had the help of so many, many people, some of you here in this audience, um, and always um, made sure that we worked together as a community to get things done and worked in a grassroots way. So, as I um, close in on the end of my comments tonight, and I close in on the end of my last few years in the California State Senate, let me just say again, I'm extremely honored to be here tonight and be honored by the League of Women Voters who does so very much to make sure that our democracy is preserved. 
and that people are encouraged to vote and take part in this very important process. And Graham and Nellie would be very proud of all of you. Thank you all very much.